you know, I, I didn't have the the entrepreneur story of like struggling in school and having teachers tell me I was stupid. I didn't have that at all. I tried to just get as good of grades as I could with as little effort as possible. So I was a, a pretty high grade student for relatively low effort and slept on the floor for the first nine months. And that took off and, you know, has generated uh, probably 35 million in revenue since we started it. Making more sales online, growing an online business. In this video, we dive deep with Alex Formosi himself, explaining how he grew his company to over $100 million in just three short years, setbacks, the struggles, and everything in between that took him and his wife, Layla, from zero to over $100 million. Hello, my name is Jose Peña, and today I'm going to be showing you an interview that I did with Alex over three years ago. As I was leaving, leaving my gas station job and building my business from the ground up after losing a million dollar business. And here we break down absolutely everything. Not only how I, just a few months prior when we did this interview, how I left the gas station job in July, 2020. And just one month later, I was doing $89,000 a month. But most importantly, how Alex swears by high ticket is able to grow a business very quickly and how they've done over a hundred million dollars over the last three years. And yes, for those who are wondering, I know Alex personally, he's a good friend, a mentor, somebody who I admire tremendously. And also he's been my client. Funny enough, he did not believe in putting out content on social media before, but that's a topic for another video. So let's just jump into this interview and show you the secrets that Alex has for us and how he grew a company from zero to over hundred million dollars in just three years. Welcome to Sales. Today we have a very special guest, um, Alex Ramosi, done over a hundred million in three short years, uh, which is absolutely insane. And today we're going to talk about his story how he got started and obviously also what he recommends to somebody that's starting out and talk about his, in my opinion, like very simple, effective high ticket funnel. Um, and just as an FYI, I'm going to like take this as a selfish note too, because uh, I remember about two years ago uh, when I went to, to your event, um, we talked and you're like focus on selling high ticket and that's what we did. And, um, it has completely changed our business and stuff like that. We've obviously gone through ups and downs, but even to this day, it's what we do and we're 80, 90% of our revenue comes from. So dude, thank you so much for taking the time to be here. I know you're super busy. Uh, so just introduce yourself for people that don't know you. We have three companies right now that we run. Um, right now I have a fitness company that has two components. One is a supplement company and the other is uh, a gym coaching business. So that business, uh, those two businesses together, um, are kind of the fitness component. Um, we have an executive team that runs that. We have a really proven model in the gym space. Uh, we were able to fundamentally change the gym model overall for brick and mortar service so that it just made more money for the business owner. It also just helped them provide more value to their customers. And by extension, we were able to, to monetize gyms in a way that no one else could because we helped gyms monetize weight loss customers in a way that no other gyms could. And so it really comes from the top down of just value creation. In the last year and a half, we uh, developed a software called Allen. And Allen, uh, we work specifically with agencies that are uh, right at kind of that $300,000 a year mark. Um, and we can just very quickly scale them to 3 million a year. It's just, a, it's a very, it's a very concrete play that we know how to do. Um, you know, we've built four eight figure businesses in the last three years and they're all still continuing. Um, and so we just understand that that model very well and what you know what the bottlenecks are going to be and so that's the avatar that we have there and so uh to, to answer the question that you haven't asked yet um we're just very specific on the avatars that we attract um and by doing that we're able to be more specific in our copy and uh probably more importantly more specific in the actual product that we uh, create and so ultimately we try and productize the service in such a way that we can create a repeatable outcome for our clients. And so for the, the secret of success, you know, if, if everyone's looking for it, is that on average in the gym space, for example, um, over two years of surveying our customers, the answers didn't vary by more than 5% from the numbers that I'll give you right now. But the average gym adds $239,000 of top line revenue that works with us within 11 months. Uh, they increase their bottom line from twenty nine fifty a month to eighty nine hundred dollars a month, and that includes what they pay us uh, in profit. Uh, they take their turn from ten point seven per month, month over month, to six point eight percent month over month, which realistically means just one out of three people actually does our entire system to get below three percent. Um, the rest don't. That's okay. Um, and they increase their price uh, from one hundred twenty nine dollars a month on average to one sixty seven per month. And so those are the averages, which means half the people did more than $240,000 a year, but it also means half did less. 
but I think we're the only company that even reports on averages because we're the only people we even track them. Uh, and so for us, it's really just comes down to how much value we can pr provide for the marketplace. And the easiest way for us to provide value is to find the exact right avatar that we know in all of their problems. And we know, and we've built a solution to their exact problems. We don't really work with cycle studios. We don't really work with yoga studios. We don't really work with bar studios. We don't really work with big 24 hour fitness boxes, right? We just work with CrossFit's bootcamp, summer private facilities that are owner operated, that have one, two locations, um, because we know how to make that model make money and we've done it over and over again and right now i think we just counted we have over a thousand testimonials that are captured testimonials not just like five stars <laughs> yeah so um we've done it uh, a lot of times and so we're pretty good at it and so to the same degree on the on the software side we work with agencies who are trying to dominate a niche and because that's kind of the next natural thing that we've done we were able to dominate a specific niche and a lot of people reach out to us to try and do the same thing. And so we have that playbook down. And so we help agencies that are at that $300,000 a year range uh, get to 3 million a year. And um, if you're interested in that, it's useallen.com and you can check it out if you feel like it. That's dope. Awesome. So, you know, the, all the companies and everything you build obviously is extremely successful and uh, it's huge. But I want to like go back in time because um, that's the part that nobody sees. You know, everybody sees right now kind of like the success quote unquote the glory but they don't see like the actual beginning stages so tell me like how do you actually get started into this uh i started a gym <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so i was uh you know I, I didn't have the the entrepreneur story of like struggling in school and having teachers tell me i was stupid i didn't have that at all i tried to just get as good of grades as I could with as little effort as possible. So I was a, a pretty high grade student for relatively low effort. Um, went to Vanderbilt, I graduated in three years, magna cum laude, I was president of fraternity there. Um, got a good consulting job, uh, was able to save up $60,000 over my first two years of that consulting job. Took the 60,000 to start my first gym um, and slept on the floor for the first nine months. Uh, it cost me 50 to open it, so I only had five or $10,000 left over. Um, and so I had one month's rent and I had a five year lease <laughs> and I'd never sold anything in my life. And so, um, you know, I had to, had to figure it out. And so that was pretty much uh, what I had to do. It was very hard for me, uh, emotionally. Um, I was definitely motivated by, uh, at the time what I thought was a desire to please my dad, um, and or prove him wrong that I was going to be successful doing this because he didn't approve of that, of that move. Because I had gone from the you know higher education consulting banking track, which everyone understands and looks good on paper, to being a personal trainer slash gym owner in sweats, uh, which doesn't sound as cool at family dinner parties. And so you know I had a, a certain degree of shame um, by put, by deciding to make that move, but I wanted to prove uh, everyone wrong. So I definitely had a lot of anger when I was younger trying to to execute that. Um, but uh, I ended up going to a marketing conference and they taught Facebook ads and this was 2013 and I, it was a, it was a conference, it was $3,000 for a weekend. It was only 10 people. So it was like a intensive, like a workshop. Yeah. And the, the offer was, was it was Travis Jones. He's a, an Australian yeah. uh, gym. Coach. He actually has like 20 gyms of his own now. Um, he doesn't coach gyms anymore. He just did that thing for a while. Um, but it, the offer was you make $10,000 by the end of the weekend or you get your money back. And so I was like, awesome. And I didn't make $10,000 by the end of the weekend, but I learned enough that I was like, this, I, this could be something. Right. And so from there, uh, you know, tried a bunch of different things. Um, uh, luckily I was in an area that I didn't know anyone. I moved across country to start the gym. Uh, I reached out to set 40 different gym owners and only one of them got back to me. Uh, cause I knew that from consulting, the easiest way to learn something is to talk to an expert. And so I just didn't want to read books. I just wanted to go someone who was already doing well with the gym and learn from them. So I learned from a gym owner for 12 weeks. I worked for him for free. And then um, I started my first gym. And so that was, you know, that that conference and going to that guy's uh, gym, his name was Sam Backyard in California. Um, I learned, you know, enough for me to start my, my first facility. Uh, again, it was still really hard. Every weekend um, I would drive up to other gym owners and see if I could just learn from them. And I would just write down everything they were doing and I would try some stuff and sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't. But, you know, piece by piece, I was able to put together a gym model uh, that made more money. And so from there, I opened up a new facility every six months off the cash flow that I was able to generate from the gyms. Um, and about three years in, uh, I kind of had a crisis of, of meaning because uh, I felt like I was making money, but I didn't really know what to do with myself. And so 
I saw a guy named Russell Brunson speak and uh, I was like, I have to work with this guy. He didn't pitch. He actually just spoke at a conference. Yeah. So I applied to go to his inner circle um, <laughs> and I met him and he said, you're too good to be running gyms. You should be teaching people how to run gyms. So he made a lot more money than I did. And so I listened to his advice and I sold all my gyms in 90 days, uh, which was uh, a big deal. Again, my dad didn't approve of that because he was like, this makes no sense. You just finally, you finally have become more successful now and then you're just throwing it all away. Um, yeah. This was, this was, you'd notice this would be a repeated pattern in my life. <laughs> um, and so, <laughs> and so anyways, I, um, I did that and uh, it, it, I started launching gyms. So I launched 32 gyms in the next 18 months. So I'd fly out, do gym turnarounds. We called them launches because the gym owner's egos couldn't handle gym rescue like bar rescue. Uh, and so actually it was originally gonna be gym rescue and then people didn't like that. So it became gym launch. And that's why it's called gym launch. And so we you know, turned around 32 facilities. The offer was that we'd fill your gym in 30 days. Um, and we did. And the issue that we ran into is that a lot of gyms weren't equipped with the systems to actually handle the full gyms. They'd go from 70 members to 270 members in 30 days and wouldn't have. Is there explicit? Yeah. Can we explicit on this? Profane? Yeah, of course. They yeah. didn't have a go fucking ahead. clue what to do. <laughs> and so I realized that this wasn't going to be a model for the long haul because it, it just like it wasn't it wasn't solving their business problem. They thought they needed more customers, but they had no idea how to even run a business, which is why they were reaching out in the first place. Right. Yeah. And so from there, um, we transitioned to, uh, it's, it's a longer story, but basically we said, you know what, let's get out of this gym space altogether. Uh, let's just sell weight loss online. That started to work. I had eight gyms that were supposed to launch the next month. I called them up to tell them we weren't going to be flying out. Uh, at this point, we had an eight man sales team. So we were flying out to eight different gyms every month and, and turning them around. Uh, we were doing, I think, three or $400,000 a month at that point. Um, and so <laughs> we fly out there and uh, and, you know, with these eight that were supposed to launch, told them we weren't going to do it. And they said, you know, please, we need it back and forth. And then finally I said, OK, I'll show you how to do it, but I'm not going to do it for you. Um, and they were like, really? Well, how much? And at this point, I was like, I've been making so much money from this system. Like it, this thing is so valuable because I've been doing yeah. this in my life. So I picked the highest number I could think of, which was six thousand dollars at the time uh, to charge for this thing. And uh, the first guy said, yes. And I was like, holy crap. Like I wasn't even trying, I purposely picked 6,000 dollars because I wanted to say no, cause I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. Yeah. And so once I knew I had to get, I had to build this thing for one guy, the next day I got on the phone with, I said $8,000 and he said, okay. And the next guy said $10,000 and said, okay. And so by the end of that one day, I'd made $60,000 and I was like, holy crap, this is unbelievable. Uh, I, and I looked at Layla, I was like, I think we're still in the gym business. We were just doing it wrong. And so I think what's interesting about that, just as a quick pause, is there was the same skill set that I had, which was marketing and running a gym, right? And I did it climbing the ladder. I did it doing the ladder when I fly out. So climbing the ladder when I was actually opening gyms, um, launching gyms when I was doing it for other people to have done for you. And then kind of a consultative model where I showed people how to do it. And I think ultimately people value education more than anything because people want growth, especially entrepreneurs. And so teaching people how to fish for themselves and run their own business was, I think, ultimately the thing that did provide the most value was transferring skills rather than doing it for people. Um, yeah. And that's really unlocked the tremendous amount of growth. And from there until now, we've sold, you know, 3,400 gyms um, into the system and they ended up becoming gym lords and joining the back end system to show how to scale their gyms and get out of it. Because in the beginning, it's just an acquisition system. The back end is how to scale it with value, right? And um, that's pretty much what we did. Um, you know, consistently try to solve problems. During that period of time, I started the supplement company because a big part of our acquisition system is you sell supplements on the second transaction to cover the cost of acquisition. Um, and so the supplement companies that were out there didn't have like all the pieces that I wanted. I always had to kind of like work around stuff. Like they didn't have a point of sale, they didn't drop ship, they didn't sell big packages. There was a bunch of things that I wanted. And so we built something that just matched for gym owners. And so that's why we created Prestige Labs and that took off and, you know, has generated. 35 million in revenue since we started it um and more importantly that's put you know half of that goes right back to the gyms uh because that goes right into their pockets so it's just real ways of helping gyms make more and then you know naturally the next thing that we were trying to figure out was how can we make them even more which is um the biggest issue most gyms have or most small business owners in general have is they don't work their leads and so we could generate these leads for these guys but the number one predictor of their success was whether they work the leads hard they work the leads hard, they get lots of people to show up, and even somebody who's bad at sales could still close people, right? If they have enough people in front of them. Uh, but if they didn't work the leads, there's nothing we could do. And so we created Allen, which is a, a software that works leads 
for small businesses so they don't need to do anything, which means they run their ads and people just walk in the door. Um, it's pretty cool. And so uh, that was supposed to just be a small side project and then it just kind of took off. Um, and Alan actually does more than Jim Launch and Prestige put together. So um, it's pretty cool. But uh, I think at the end of the day, all of it was just come down to like finding the biggest pain points that existed and seeing if we could solve the problem in a unique way. Yeah, I love that. So that was that was the entire story. <laughs> you just like went. So now now is where my selfish uh, part comes in, where I'm just gonna ask you questions like for myself. Um, and I also have a couple of questions here that people do want to ask. Would you mention so in that explosive growth? Because I remember um, I met you. What was it? Year one. I think it was when you had hit 10 million in 10 months, I think. Yeah. Um, what was, so you were going extremely quickly, almost at the same quote unquote pace, let's just say multiplying or exponentially as you were helping gym owners, let's just say go from 70 members go to 700 or 270, whatever the model breaks. And I remember you mentioning this and it was every time you multiply by three, yeah. it breaks. So. Yes with the growth that you were experiencing you literally multiplied it by three multiple times in 10 months how the heck you were able to survive that so we had the infrastructure because before this we were at three hundred thousand a month right and so right. tripling to a million a month roughly um and then tripling again to you know two and a half million a month again roughly because you could do it on a yearly basis you know 30 million, uh, sorry, you know, 10, 10 ish million a year to 30 million a year. So 830, you know, so it's, 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 it's not, it's not rocket science, right? But typically when you triple a system is when it'll break again, right? You can double a system and it's, it's, it's there, but it's, it's stressed. But when you triple it, it breaks. And so we had to go through two rungs of that, um, in that growth path. And then I was stuck at, kind of that two and a half, $3 million uh, a month. You know, our, our peak, we did 4.4 .4 million in January of last year. Um, and we've been holding pretty steady around three, three plus, three to three and a half, somewhere in there uh, for the last, you know, year and change. And so the the first level, that the, the breakage points are actually all operational. They have nothing to do with, they're all, they're all infrastructure, but it's people-based, right? Because everything that it takes to get your first million three million and depending on your model maybe even 10 million uh comes down to your business model itself is making sure that the offer matches and the product does what it's supposed to do right that's kind of like just the big picture stuff but from there uh scaling is scaling levels of leadership right and so at the very beginning most entrepreneurs scale doing right they stop doing things and they get their first you know core team of five people if you think about it from a department standpoint you got one guy who's doing sales one person doing fulfillment one person doing billing uh, you know, uh, you're probably still doing the marketing, um, and then, you know, administrative and HR legal catch all right tech, whatever, all yeah. of that's kind of wrapped into one finger. And so you've got those kind of five that are there and they're just doing, and you're still heavily involved, right? Once you go from five to 25, uh, client, you know, members, not members, excuse me, employees, teammates, each of these people now has five people underneath of them. Right. And so they, these people go from doing to managing. And a lot of times it's not the same people. The best doers are not the best managers, right? And so you'll go through these pitfalls of promoting your best person. And then because they've been with you the longest, but they're actually not the best manager and you cycle through them and you learn that skill the hard way or that lesson the hard way. And then now you've got 25 ish people and you're like, okay, this is working. But then now you realize that you need another level, which then becomes a level of leadership, right? So you've got doing, and then you've got managing, and then you've got leading. And then you have what I would consider the fourth level, which is thinking. Right, which is who can anticipate what is going to happen and be strategic. Um, and ideally come in with experience far surpassing your own. And so that is, in my opinion, what gets you from 30 to 100. Now I haven't hit 100 yet, but I feel like it's been the last three years and I've done a lot of work over the last three to six months. Um, and I'm pretty positive that that's what it is. And we're putting those pieces in place and we're seeing the the direct benefit um, of some of those decisions, but I was stuck there for almost three years. Uh, you know, we did 28 million two years ago, we did 37 last year, and we were on pace for again, 35-ish, you know, this year. And I think that um, it'll take us between now and the end of the year to kind of uh, remedy some of the, basically reorganize the infrastructure so that we can set up for getting to the 100, right? Um, but that's again, right, a tripling. And so it's yeah. it's kind of walking through that. And the thing is, is it's hard because, I mean, you have to 
how do you hire this person before you have the revenue to justify them? Are you building a plane while it's still moving? And that's why entrepreneurship is challenging, right? Especially if you're self-funded, which just about everybody who's listening to this probably is. Yeah. And so, you know, you have to remain very profitable during this period of time so that you can afford the growth and more importantly, afford the fuck ups because you will fuck up horribly. I have five $1 million mistakes that I've made that cost me an actual million dollars, not like hypothetical what I could have made if I like I've actually I lost a million dollars in five different decisions I've made. So like you will fuck up. And if I did not have the cushion, if I did not have the margin from the business, we would have gone under. I feel like that because <laughs> last year I did a couple mistakes that cost about 700 to 800, like actual cash, which was not <laughs> fun at all. Um, so I definitely can relate you to learned. that. Now, oh, you learned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would have loved to learn without having to you know, pay the price, but it's part of the the process that, that we go through. Now, let's I want to I want to like dumb it down, like to simplest terms. When you started, you know, you had a skill which was actually running a game. So the first thing, in my opinion, like people actually need to be able to is develop a skill set, right? Mm -hmm. That people actually want to play. You sold it for high ticket just by putting out the price point that you thought nobody was going to pay and they paid you, yeah. right? But what was, and I remember you telling me this, it's like, um, I had like the course at the time and then this high ticket thing. And you're like, but like 80%, 90% of your revenue is coming from here. Just focus there. Um, and you know, I, listen to you one month and then the next month I didn't listen to you and ironically the month I did listen to you we made like 400 and then the next one was like 80 so you know but for people that are watching let's just say they're good at marketing um you know we have plans that help let's just say jewelry businesses they were able to scale that how would you be able to structure an offer and a funnel because like your funnel is in my opinion like very very simple um compared to like the whole auto webinar industry that you know of um, how would you ever to structure a funnel and an offer that allows you to sell high ticket? So I don't think of myself as a very good marketer. I still don't. You can see my ads. I think they're horrible. Um, <laughs> but the reality is that we just, everything's backwards, right? It starts with the back, not the front. And everyone thinks about the front, which is why everyone's broke, right? The guy who can spend the most to a car customer that ultimately wins. And so when I had, I had literally an identical conversation with Dan Henry when he, that year where we did 10 million in 10 months um, in revenue, I think he was at the time feeling really hot because of the, because uh, his course was, you know, blowing up way back when, right? Yeah. And I think he had done, I don't know, I think a million or $2 million, something like that. I think it was a million at that point. Um, yeah, 20, yeah, it, it just got in the two right, comma, 20, 20, yeah, whatever yeah. it was. And we were in the back and um, he was definitely, uh, I, 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 he's, I'm, I'm friends with him now, uh, but he was definitely feeling like hot shit at the time. Yeah. Um, and uh, I remember him asking me and he was like, uh, what'd you do? And I told him that we're, and it, like his eyes just like went really wide. He's like 10 million. He's like, you must be really good at Facebook ads. I was like, oh no, I'm horrible at advertising. <laughs> he was like, and I could tell that he's like, it didn't compute. And I was like, dude, you sold a thousand people to make a million dollars. I was like, if I sold a thousand people, I was like, I'd make $30 million. And he was like, what? I was like, your sounds like so much more effort. <laughs> and he just like, he was just like reeling there and it ended up being the, the catalyst that changed this whole business. So he actually went high ticket as well. And so it was from that yeah. conversation. Um, and so fundamentally it starts with the back, right? And so if you think about it's the product, right? How can I get somebody the biggest result possible? Especially if you're in a consulting or any kind of business where this person has to do something, right? The more invested you can get them, the more invested they'll be. Right. If you had somebody pay $100,000 for a course versus $1,000 for a course, the person takes $100,000. One will be a more qualified customer, right? Because they've already they already have a certain amount of money. Second, uh, because they invested more, they'll be far more likely to actually follow it and get the results that you promised. And so, if your goal is to actually help people to the highest degree you can, you should charge more for it. But also because you will then have the profit margin to a scale your business, b mess up because you will, and c provide exceptional service to the best of your ability. Right, you'll be able to hop on phones, you'll be able to do one on ones because you don't have to deal with a thousand customers and support tickets, you might only have a hundred, but a hundred could still be a three, three million dollar year business, which for many people who are listening to this might be their wildest dreams. I don't know. Um, so it's just, it's just a, it's a frame shift, and you have to truly believe that because if you get on the phone with someone and you know, you're like, hey, I'm gonna help you build a zillion dollar, whatever, or a hundred thousand dollar business, whatever. If, if, if you're charging two thousand dollars for that, I don't even reasonably believe you. 
right? I mean, if, if you're going to help me make $100,000 a year, it's not reasonable for you to charge me $2,000 for that. It'd be more reasonable for you to charge $10,000 for that. Then I would believe that it's actually possible, right? You can even use that in a selling conversation. Would you believe me? How can I be your business coach if I'm selling you something that's going to make you $100,000? I would probably be jipping myself if I sold it for $2,000. This doesn't make sense, right? For $10,000, I can, I, can, I can really help guarantee your success. And I can provide the resources to actually do that. And all the rest of your competition are going to try and undercut you, which ends up killing them anyways. I've had a million people try and knock off Jim Launch. I'm pretty sure if you add all of the revenue up, it's what we do in a day. Um, it doesn't matter, right? Because they, they, the thing is, is they try and go away from the tactics and the strategies that we use and say, I'm not going to do it that way. But the thing is, is the strategy is the right strategy. And so they try and go against what we've done to try and prove something, but they end up just prove, making a bad business. Yeah. You've already gone through the pain of actually testing what they did. <laughs> get the fuck up and then realize yeah right. okay. but the big thing that ever like this is this is a little bit higher level but i'll say it anyways after not having done this for you know i've 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 been you know in in my own business for nine years right i had my gyms first and then we had the gym launch business where we we're just launching gyms and then we had the coaching business um and now we have the software supplements the coaching there's three main elements that have to all be masterful if you want to get to 10 million 30 million 100 million and it's acquisition, product, and operations. You have to have all three. Most people who are in the funnel community really have none of them and are learning acquisition. And acquisition will only get you to, you know, a million bucks maybe, but your product shit and you have no organization or operations behind your business. Because of that, you can never scale. Right. And because of the fact that your product sucks, you have no word of mouth and you have no referrals, which is why it becomes this kind of launch business, right? We're just drumming up hype and then launching. And then in a perfect world, in a perfect business world, you would launch product and it would continue to sell because people would get great results and tell their friends and then more people would come. That's the way it's supposed to work. But in the marketing dominated mini fishbowl that we live in, it's all about the marketing and the sales. But that's why most people are broke. Just pretend that they're not. Yeah, the, the whole hype marketing. <laughs> anyway. yeah. Cool. So, um, all right. So basically, let me see if I can summarize it and, and, and dumb it down a little bit more. <laughs> what you're saying is the, the main thing you people should focus on is the actual product and the delivery. Oh, always. And then, so that that's like the back. But what happens, what would you tell somebody, let's just say, for example, that's starting from scratch, um, right? That knows let's say i'll tell you a real example one of our clients or one of the people in our community um he helped he took our program on instagram and was able to i don't know like 3x or 5x his dad's jewelry business um and now they're making like six figures from that so i told him like hey teach other jewelry businesses the exact same thing you did with your dad and he has one client he's doing like 10 tips and k a month so he has replicated that but there's, he's starting from scratch, right? Or from zero, basically. He's uh, on a on the same level you were when you were like going and flying out to the gyms. Totally. Um, a done for you model. How will you transition into from that to actually the consulting coaching aspect? He needs to do done for you for a little bit because then you learn every single aspect. We, we launched 33 gyms. It's a lot of gyms, right? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I gave away services essentially for 33 gyms until I really had it nailed. I already had my six and I've been doing it for three years at that point. And so I, I was on a different podcast and was like, I know you did all that stuff, but what if someone wants to shortcut all that? I'm like, you can't, you won't beat it. You're not going to be, you can't beat the work, right? Like you're not going to somehow create a Jesus product without doing the Jesus work. It's not going to happen. And so there's just a level of detail and intricacy and nuance that you have to understand about how it's going to work to make a product that, works for most people, which is probably a secondary point, which is worth hitting on, which is that the reason that Jim Launch tracks its average metrics for its clients is because we actually have good average metrics. And most people are afraid to track the metrics because three quarters of the people don't even log in. Right. And so if you really focus on those metrics, it will be and, and making systems that everyone can do. One of the biggest mistakes people make is that they are promoter type personalities and just say, this is exactly what I did. I don't teach people how to run a gym the way I would run a gym. And that is because I'm better at it. Simply yeah. put, because I've done it more. It's not, a, you know what I mean? Like I've done it more. I'm better at high ticket sales. I've acquired that skill set, right? A lot of people don't have that. 
And so I try and teach systems that I think 90% of people that, that come in can be successful with. I cannot get 100% of people to learn Spanish if I teach Spanish. You went to school, there are people who get Ds. It's true, there are. But I want to be able to see if, how many people I can get to be proficient in Spanish, if Spanish is an analogy for the business model. Um, and I want to teach uh, Rosetta Stone style instead of school style. Rosetta Stone is like spoken, spoken language so that you can get around. Because I know that if I can get everybody, I'd rather 100% have a system that I could get 90% of people to make $100,000 than 5% of people to make a million. And most people structure their businesses so that 5% of people can succeed big rather than having a business that almost everyone succeeds in. Because the reality is that those 5%, when they use your model, will then figure out the next model and then they will do it. Right? They'll win fast, they'll win hard, and then they will unlock for themselves what that next level looks like. But if you only present what you did because you have a certain skill set that you've acquired, in general, your clients won't be as successful. And because of that, your word of mouth will suffer, your reputation will suffer, and then you will always be living once to launch. That makes sense. That makes sense. So basically, if you're starting from scratch, you have a certain skill set, you're done for you 33 times. <laughs> yeah. Get really and then, yeah. Cool. I mean, we did it for. Like I, 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 <laughs> I ran gyms for three my own gyms and I did it successfully. You know, there's a lot of guys who fail at their gym, the gym goes under, and then they start coaching gyms. Like there's a certain amount and like, they'll never succeed because at a certain degree, they feel like they're frauds because to a certain degree they kind of are, right? Yeah. Uh, and that's that's the issue, right? Leading by so then, you know, we did 33 launches to make sure that it worked not just in my markets, but in all markets. And then I could say, with conviction when someone's like, but it will work my market. I'm like, well, it worked in 40 other markets. So I don't know why it wouldn't. Yeah. But that's where the back end is so important because then you can provide consistent value and people are going to get a lot of, and they're going to continue to pay you because whatever you sell next is going to, the conversion rate on the next thing will be predicated on their success with the first thing. So if you charge $10,000 for something and it makes someone a hundred thousand dollars, if your next program is $25,000, they will buy it if they made $100,000. It's not because of the sales copy or the pitch, it's because of the result they got before. And so we were able to build a, a, a massive recurring revenue stream uh, from gyms that had you know, received value from Gym Launch, the front end program, which was 16,000. Then on the back end, they continue to pay 42,000 a year for three years uh, because we helped them scale the business so they didn't have to be in it. And they believe the promise we made because we kept the first one. Yeah, cool. Um, again, back end, <laughs> focus on the actual delivery and then everything else kind of like will fall into place, but selling high ticket because that's the only possible way that you will be able to actually deliver on the promise that you get. If you're in a, if you're in a service business, you have to sell at a higher price. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Cool. So uh, I want to, you know, start wrapping up here. Um, but before we do, what will you do if you lost it all tomorrow? Like relationships, money but the current skill set that you have right now, you kept it. What would you do to hit like a million dollars as fast as possible? Um, I mean, at this point I could probably do a lot of things. You know, I could market and sell helping gyms. I could market and sell how to scale them. Education businesses, I've done both of those to at a very high level. And so I would do that again. I mean, it's literally, Here's Nat explaining my process. If you're interested, hop on the call. And then I would explain the value that I know I could provide someone, break a couple of beliefs about what they're doing wrong, explain the math behind why they're doing it wrong, and then provide results, leverage them into a testimonial. Um, probably give my first five to 10 away for, for almost nothing, just to get the, the social proof and get the word of mouth and then leverage those to get more clients. Cool. Well, okay. You mentioned something regarding the, the ad. Um, I'm an engineer, so I'm like a little bit I'll geek out a little bit on the number side. What have you seen in terms of the marketing aspect is the actual acquisition for high ticket. So you mentioned like ad yeah. to hop on a call. That's usually an application funnel with a simple 20 minute video explaining your stuff. They fill out the app, you jump on the call. What's the actual? So people person? overestimate. So the funnel doesn't matter that much. The funnel, like it really doesn't. You know what I mean? Like we've tried four or five different funnels. They all kind of work. So it doesn't, I don't really think it's overly I mean, if you just go opt in for the thing, schedule a call or opt in for the thing, apply, schedule a call. It really depends on the marketplace. If you have a multiple level marketplace, what I mean by that is if you have a marketplace like gyms where there's personal trainers and gym owners, then sometimes adding an extra layer of friction to get the get the riffraff out is useful. If you're in real estate agents and you're trying to get the 
crappy real estate agent set and just want the top 5%, that's useful. If you're in salons and you want salon owners versus stylists, having an extra level of friction is important. But there's other businesses like dentists, the front desk girl's not gonna opt in for a dentist though, right? Uh, so it really depends on what market you're going after, uh, what you know, how much friction you wanna introduce in the, into the marketing process. But from everything that we have seen, the vast majority, uh, 80, 78%, whatever it was, 78, 80% of our clients come in after consuming multiple pieces of content. And so I pretty much haphazardly was making content for my first three years just because it was just top of mind. I'm like, hey, here's how you do this, here's how you do that. And I really didn't have a goal, but you know, uh, all the people in the inner circle were like, you need to do podcasts. So I was like, all right, I'll make podcasts. <laughs> Um, and it turned out that the vast majority of the people who ended up buying from us had consumed the podcast or read the book or done both. And so I'm not saying if you're brand new, you need to do that, but I'm saying that over time it does build a lot of brand equity and people will yeah. just know that you're legit. In the beginning, you kind of have to sell your soul a little bit and promise that you're going to do a really good job and just over deliver with one-on-one -on -one service to make up for the fact that you have no brand, right? Everyone has a strategic advantage. If I'm getting into the gym space, right? If I'm a brand new gym guru, brand spanking new right? I'm going to say, listen, Jim launch isn't going to give you the one-on-one -on -one attention I'm going to give you. Alex doesn't even know you exist, right? You're just a number to him. He doesn't even care. He's got people he pays, you know, to, to you know, run ads and, and teach you this stuff. He's got customer support. Like they're not me, right? I'm a way higher level person than all the people he is working for him. And he's not going to care like I do, right? That's what I'm going to do to try and sell you. On the flip side, if I'm me, I'm going to be like, this motherfucker has no business right? Being in yeah. business, he has no experience. He has no testimonials. There's a reason we're the biggest. It's because we're the best, right? And we have this down to a process. I don't need to go and make shit up as I'm going because we already know exactly what needs to happen in order. They're both angles, right? And you have to play the cards you have, right? Right now, I'm not going to sell on the personalization aspect because I don't hop on the phone with anyone, right? Yeah. But if I'm starting out, then you have to over deliver with the things that you have competitive advantages for don't build the scale in the beginning you have to you have to scale the unscalable in the beginning to get to get going to get moving and that's where sometimes giving away services at a massive discount or for free or based on performance etc are um are really important especially when you're getting started yeah that it's actually you know what's funny it's actually how i connect with you <laughs> doing stuff for free for a lady boss um you know, we got them to like 100K a month recurring on Instagram. They connected with, with you, then they connected with Alex Becker, and they just like snowballed from there by doing yeah. stuff for free. And like you said, scaling the scalable. Yeah. Um, so, okay, cool. So basically, in short, <laughs> for all the marketing, because I know a lot of people like marketing, uh, follow me, the funnel doesn't even matter that much. The result matters, right? You have to be good. Like everyone wants to skip the fact that you have to be good. You have to be good. Yeah. Like everyone's not an expert. You're not like, you're not, you know, if you're an expert, you're not an expert, right? But the reality is Russell's message is not the way people take it. Everyone thinks they need to be an expert and then says, I'm a Facebook ads expert. You're probably not. You might be an expert at making your wife happy. You might be an expert at bowling. You might be an expert at, I don't know, watercoloring, whatever. That's what he means about an expert business. There's something that you're probably good at or pretty good at, right? But everyone just tries to pick the one thing that's business related and tries to make themselves in the biz op and then competes in a red ocean where they're actually not the expert and people can tell. So that's the issue, right? So either go become an expert and the way to go become an expert is to give away services free, learn the game and then be able to teach it, right? Don't immediately, like people are like, I want to, I get messages all the time. I want to be a motivational speaker like you. I'm like, well, what have you done that's motivating? I just want people to be motivated by me. Well, I'm not motivated by you. You haven't done anything. Yeah. Right. Go get like, go work for 10 years. And like, it's just like, you can't shortcut it. And the, and the longer you build the base of work and expertise, the higher the peak. Right. I had gyms. I had six of them. And then we did 33 launches in person turnarounds. Like that's a pretty wide base. And then it created a pretty big peak. That's a lot of work too, by the way. Because launching 30, 33 gyms in person means you have to fly out, mm -hmm. which means at the very minimum, one day over there, one day back. Uh, and we'd spend a week, we'd spend a week or more, one to three weeks at every location. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of work, but you yeah. did it in order to prove the model and then systematize you know, Every it. single thing that can go wrong.
and then already address it so that when people go in, it's smooth, it's seamless for them, but it's not seamless, it wasn't seamless to create, it's seamless for them now. Yeah, of course. Cool. So hopefully people actually understood that part. Um, finally, what does success mean to you? It's changed over time. Um, I think success for me now um, is becoming a better version of myself through business. I think entrepreneurship is the ultimate vehicle for self-improvement. And I think that most people who are attracted to entrepreneurship want to be better than they are. They're inherently dissatisfied with their current condition, myself included. There's, I'm, and I can't even tell you how frustrated I've been being at you know mid thirties for the last three years. Right? I actually it's, saw the, the, the live video that you posted on inside your own Facebook group. The, um, drive me nuts. But <laughs> yeah. I think I, I, and I've done a ton of work since I became aware. Of, like I didn't even, I wasn't even, I just, I didn't even, I had to admit it out loud that I'd been stuck for three years, right? It, 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 because going 28 to 37, I was like, okay, we're still growing, but this year we're gonna hit probably the same number. Um, and I had to, I had to confront that and be like, I'm doing something wrong. I'm not letting go. I'm not hiring the smartest people. And I am still functioning using an old winning strategy. And what I mean by that, this is a really interesting concept, which won't apply to most people, but um, <laughs> people who are successful in general, people who have already won at a certain game, they have become experts they continue to apply a certain formula to their life because that formula has resulted in success. But there's a point where when you are a hammer and everything looks like a nail, you always try and solve everything by hammering it with your winning strategy. Everyone's winning strategy is different, right? Your winning strategy is different than mine is. But at one point you will encounter a problem that you cannot use that winning strategy on. And using that winning strategy actually is counter-effective. And it limits you by its nature from getting to the next thing. And so it's taken me a long time of thinking about what is my winning strategy? What are the character traits? What are the beliefs that I have that limit me from getting to the next thing? Part of it is who I hire and how I think about how I attract talent. But also, I mean, it's really top down. I won't get super deep on it, but that's, that's the stuff that you have to really dig into in order to continue to go to the next level, which is why I think entrepreneurship is such an amazing thing is because it forces us to constantly reinvent ourselves. Evolve. Yeah, I don't see billion. There's, I mean, besides like Elon Musk, uh, but like so many of the billionaires that I have met are so chill. They're not stressed at all. And I think that the reason I couldn't scale past, you know, mid thirties for the last three years has been because I pushed, I pushed, I pushed, I pushed. And I think that you have to get to a point where you can build a model that isn't painful, right? It's not painful for me to push because at some point you don't want to push anymore not it's just like there's so much pain that you're like i don't i just like i don't like and i mean like i have more money than i will ever like i'm, I'm done financially like super done um and so you can't you know what i mean you have to figure out something that you're actually not to be gary v but really passionate about um because it's something and and building the business around your life that you want to live uh, because by doing that, then when you scale, you're always going to get more of what you have. And so if you have some pain, when you scale more, you get more pain, right? And you scale more and you get more pain than you even had. And so you have to find a way to eliminate yourself and the pain that you have associated. Part of that is mental work, but also part of it is how, how you structure the business. It's both sides. You know what I mean? It's it's partially yeah. mental. Um, and so anyways, I could talk about that forever. <laughs> yeah. But I would see as a, you know, as a note of balance, I would say that's after you, you hit a certain level. Cause at the beginning, like you said, you just gotta like go through the pain. <laughs> oh, you've got to hustle your ass off. Like you got to work, right? Like everyone's afraid of work. Everyone's looking for a shortcut and there isn't one. There isn't one. The reason every single guy gets on stage who actually has achieved stuff just says the same thing, which is just work really hard, work your face off because you have like the baseline thin is you have to be really good. And the only way to become a master at something is through repetition. It's a volume. Yep, exactly. What, where do you see yourself, I don't know, doing? Do you, are you gonna like stay in, in the same gym space or branch out? Well, or? Alan is all for uh, education-based businesses and agencies. Okay. So it's specifically for anybody who deals with brick and mortar businesses in this particular niche. So if you deal with dentists or chiropractors or jewelers, whatever, right? Um, and so we help them scale their businesses using the platform that we built because it's what we started scaling Gym Launch on because it solved all the problems that I was doing. 
Um, and so that's what we do now, but it's, it's a, I'm not doing what I did with Jim Launch. I'm taking on, I'm hand selecting clients that I want to work with. Um, and like I said, I'm looking, you know, I'm looking for guys who are at 300 ish that I can take to 3 million. Like that's, that means I take them through two levels of, uh, of breakage, basically take them to hundred, then break it, take them to 250 to 300, break it. Um, and so if I do, it's like those two, I can just very, very quickly get them through that. Um, and that's an outcome that I know that I can, I can do consistently, but that means like I'm not that automatically wards off 80%, 90% of the market. Who's like, I'm trying to make my first dollar online. I'm like, this isn't for you. Right. Yeah. And so not being all things to all people, um, and dealing with clients that I really like because they've already achieved a certain level, um, of mastery to get to the, the next thing. Cool. Well, dude, that's, that's it. Thank you so much for being here. I, I really appreciate it. Just selfishly. I've learned actually quite a bit. Um, so like <laughs> after this, you know, like look at my entire process because I've been actually working on investing quite a bit of time and money in, over the last 60 days into actual delivery. So just knowing that, <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, I'm more of a marketing guy. <laughs> um, you are. So I'll tell you right now, the issue that you have right now is that you don't have somebody who's as good at you at product and as good as you at operations, right? And so you're a one man band that needs, you're a stool that has one leg and needs three. Right. And you're massively deficient on product. And, and I'm not saying that your product's not good. That's not the point yeah. is that you need someone who's a product leader, right? Who's done uh, client activation for 10 years. You know what I mean? And knows exactly what metrics to look at, knows how to uh, activate customers within X period of time. What those activation metrics need to look at is tracking that on a weekly basis on a spreadsheet that's just like, okay, we got 60% activated this week. Next week, we get 65% activated. Next week, we get 70% activated. Define what those activation metrics are, right? A lot of people look at churn, which is a lagging indicator rather than activation because activation is the thing that's actually going to get you where you want to go because you can actually improve that on a regular basis. You can't improve churn because it takes 12, 16 weeks to see if an intervention is working on churn, whereas activation, you get feedback much faster, right? That's what somebody who actually knows what customer success looks like would already know when to start implementing those data systems inside of your business to do, right? On the flip side, on the operation side, you need someone who's, who can set up those cadences, set up those one-on-ones, set up those meetings, make sure that IT, legal, HR, finance are all taken care of on the back office so that you don't actually run into a massive tax bill, accidentally get hit with some sort of claim or some insurance thing, or get stuck in some sort of lawsuit because you're, you're protected because you've got somebody who's done that before and then that three or four or five other businesses. Right, so that you can actually run and do what you're really good at, right? Where it gets interesting is that your product is your marketing, right? Yeah. And that's why it can be uh, difficult, right? But there are people who are just as good as you. You just have to find them. And that's what I said, I've been stuck at that level because I did not find people who could think and could innovate like I could. And I selfishly, with my ego is like, I love being able to save the day, right? But being the guy who always saves the day means that I'm always gonna have to save the day which means it's not a business, it's just me. Yeah. yeah. For me, it's been an iteration on my side, I just not simplifying things before actually doing that. Because the, the issue with me is like, obviously you can't find, or I wasn't able to find somebody that's as good as me because obviously they have their own business, <laughs> you know? So that's it's a just, belief. That's a belief. Okay, that's a belief, All right. Um, but I had to let, yeah. <laughs> well, I had to simplify things like to the dumbest level that people, with let's say 400 followers on Instagram could make $21,000 in a month, right? So I had to like simplify things to the dumbest level and then from there build. And that's what, you know, I've done uh, over the last, I don't know, 90 to 180 days. And now we're working on delivery and the actual activation, which is, it's a very good relief saying <laughs> to know that I'm actually on the, on the right track on the activation aspect is we're ac actively building a process to have weekly check-ins and one-on-one -on -one, like all those little things find success managers like all the not sexy stuff that nobody talks about so there's something that actually is required in a scale of business i mean yeah. it's, it's just the you know the info and education space is all is all about making the first sale but everybody wants to make a million dollars and you don't make it on making one sale you make it on making an amazing product and having amazing like there's the product and there's the experience and those are separate right Cool. Dude, thank you so much for being here. Anything else you want to say, promote to people right now? Um, I'll just say one, one quick thing and then I'll say the promotion thing. If you're starting out, there's a three-step process. There's a, um, there's a podcast I made called Talent Stacking. It's on Alex's podcast. It's one of my top podcasts. Um, but like, as I've kind of been able to look third, you know, 
pull out of myself and look back and like, what are the, what are the things that were each level is the first thing in the beginning is you need to acquire skills, right? And then after you acquire skills and you just develop character traits and those are different than skills, right? So for example, you might have to learn how to sell, but then you might have to have the character trait and the discipline to focus on one niche or one product or one business, right? Yeah. You might have the ability to, to sell, but you're not focused. And so because of that, you're all spread thin all over the place and then your business ideas work, which for many of you may be what you're doing right now, right? From the character traits, then you need to change your beliefs about what's possible in the world and about what's possible with employees and what's possible with customers and their success, right? And once you've done that three-step process, you start over again. Then you need to acquire the skill of managing and training, recruiting and hiring salespeople, right? And so you can create a sales system. And then from there, there's the character traits that are going to be associated with patience. And again, steadfastness and focus at a different level, right? When I was, when I was starting out now, it's very easy for me to say no to a $10 million a year opportunity. It's easy for me to say no to a $30 million opportunity. It's not though, when you start out, right? I had to learn that right now. I can't, I, I'm saying no to a hundred million dollar opportunity because I feel like I'm in a vehicle that I can do more than that in right now. But some of the biggest mistakes I made was saying yes to opportunities because they were there rather than simply continuing to focus on the one thing because one business can take you as big as you want. There's $100 million roofing businesses. There's $100 million you know, dentist businesses, $100 million jewelry businesses. You don't need to be in multiple niches or have, I have four different, I want to have multiple revenue streams. It's like, dude, you can't even make enough from one. Why do you have seven? The thing is, is they're listening to people who are way beyond them. And so you hear, listen to a billionaire who talks about having multiple revenue streams. It's like, he's a billionaire. Look at how he got there. Most of them did one thing really well. And then at that point had to, because they had so much money, they had to then start buying different revenue streams because they had to do something for cash, right? But like, watch how people actually got there. It's with one thing. Yeah, the, the right decision in the wrong time, it's the wrong decision. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I had so many, yeah, uh, so, so many people. Anyway, so that's the that's the quick piece of advice. If you want to listen to it, it's called Talent Stacking. You can go to alexspodcast.com. My podcast is called Gym Secrets. It's about to get rebranded. Um, the last year and a half has nothing to do with gyms. <laughs> it's just about business. I just have to change the name. Um, and uh, and yeah, that's about it. If you're if you're an agency that's doing you know thirty thousand dollars a month, you can go to useallen.com. Um, if you're if you're interested and you're in a specific niche. Cool. So use Alan.com and then alexpodcast.com. Yep. For that. Alex. With yes. Cool. Alex's podcast. Yep. Awesome. Well, dude, thanks so much again for being here. Bam. Go check out his Alex podcast. Send him a message on Instagram. Blow him up. Uh, tell you <laughs> <came> for me. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, just go go check out his stuff. Um, you know, me personally, I've been connected with you since 2018. And like simple little conversations have been exponentially beneficial for me, my personal life and my business. Um, so I appreciate you a lot. So, awesome. well, it's, it's mutual. Love, love yeah. seeing you. <laughs> well, man, thank you so much. Have a great day. Uh, talk to you soon.